which is it's like a, a slime mold they call it um, which is labyrinthula zosteri <laughs> labyrinthula um, pathogen that specifically attacks um, mainly sea grasses but I think it affects other plants as well um, and you find it everywhere it's in the seagrass meadows today but uh, what it does is it infects the leaves and it causes these big lesions and where you've got the lesion the plant can't photosynthesize and so if it has too many lesions it dies. Usually a healthy plant in a healthy meadow would survive this because they would just outgrow it and that's what usually happens in nature if you've got a healthy plant and you've got a pest on it usually it just just outgrows the pest so it part of it might get eaten but it won't get completely are destroyed by it because it's so healthy it outgrows it. But what they think happened um, in the 1930s, they think they had, around the world, we had a real problem with water quality. And that's the biggest, one of the biggest issues because if you've got problems with water quality, like excess nutrients, for example, um, excess nutrients will cause blooms of plankton and it stops the light getting to the, the sea floor. It's a shame that we're losing so much of it. Um, so recent studies said we've lost up to 92% up to around the UK. Um, so at, at least 50% and then yeah, it could be as high as 92%. So we've lost a lot of it. And so we're trying to figure out where, where it was and where we can put it back. I mean, to us, it's, it's the wonderland. Um, it does so much. There's so many. It provides so many ecosystem services. It's a plant. That means it has roots. It has rhizomes, and that helps to stabilise the sediment. So that prevents coastal erosion. It also helps keep our oceans um, healthy. So it, it um, deposits sediment onto the beds because it helps slow down wave energy, essentially. But then it also it engineers its own habitat. So in terms of it. Um, slowing down wave energy and making that sediment fall down to the seabed that then creates clean like clearer water and so then the clearer water means that more light can penetrate through so it does engineer its own habitat to make sure that it can keep growing um, which is amazing but yeah we just need to give it a bit of a helping hand um, at the moment <laughs> grass out or damage it or scar it with say anchors or moorings you're reducing really the integrity of the, the whole ecosystem. In the 1930s there was a huge die-off of seagrass, um, it's Zostra marina mainly um, in, in the temperate Atlantic, so it happened around the UK and a, around the north coast of America. So that's where the sort of beginnings of seagrass restoration took place. You had people trying, that obviously these naturalists and these um, 
uh, researchers noticed that there was this huge die-off of the seagrass um, and they tried to find ways of, of taking, taking bits of seagrass and replanting it in areas where it's been lost. So Project Seagrass is an environmental charity dedicated to protecting seagrass. Uh, so we do a lot of outreach, do a lot of educational materials, um, go to schools and talk about it, um, and basically kind of just spread the word about seagrass. I feel like it's kind of one of those lesser known habitats that not a lot of people are really aware of. Um, and so our job is to make people aware of it, make people care about it, and hopefully that kind of translates into um, not destroying it and restoring it where we can. Um, and so that's our job, is to protect what we have and restore what we've lost. It's a laborious process, but we've got a lot of data to sift through and that's going to tell us quite a lot um, about the meadow. It depends on how tightly compacted they think a tennis ball is. Once it's dry, it's really about true. True. So would that be more or less? Uh, uh, less. So you need it. Yeah. Why do they use guesstimation that we use a tennis ball? Like, surely we're scientists here. Yeah. <laughs> We're all scientists here. I can say numbers. Yeah. It's very labour intensive, which is the whole problem with restoration of any kind, really, is the fact that it's so labour intensive. We use these he little hessian bags, which when they're wet, and they're filled with sand, they sink down to the bottom and they sort of bury themselves in the sediment. And we put the seeds in here, um, but first of all, we, we tie them onto these long ropes so that we can deploy them from a boat so then they're in big long lines, um, each of these filled with sand. And we get volunteer divers, we get volunteer students. So we've had the local um, well, the Swans University Scuba Club, they've helped us. Um, and we get people going out and collecting seeds. And it's usually around July, August time, maybe even into September, depending upon the year. And you go through the seagrass meadow and you collect these seed spades. acoustic receivers which lay on the seabed. We've got a big array out in Swansea Bay um, and then we've got some going up as far as sort of Cardiff, um, down as far as Tenby and then also on the Devon coast. And they sit on the seabed and they listen out for the tags which we've tagged the salmon and sea trout and they're tagged. Uh, th those tags give off an acoustic ping um, at regular intervals and so we can track them around the coast.
but as water quality has improved over the years, it's now looking like we can bring it back where it has been lost. Um, and so I say to us, I mean, seagrass, to people who know about seagrass, it's been a long time coming, mm. um, but it has just recently picked up, um, and yeah, in the last couple of years, really, that it's become kind of more on people's, I, th I think it was since um, BBC did, you know, like the Blue Planet, and mm. they spoke about seagrass, and everyone was like, what's this? <laughs> um, and then that helped people to kind of figure out what it is and then care about it, because it is basically getting the word out. I mean, you think of marine habitats, you think of coral reefs, you're not going to really think of seagrass. Um, so yeah, our job is to kind of put that on people's agenda and then you can get funding for it and then you get funding to restore it. Things have changed. I mean, originally it was down to a handful of people who had you know, huge cameras and it was all slide films and um, you know, you'd wait two to three weeks to get your pictures back and you were limited on how much you could take underwater to. Well now, you know, there, there aren't many um, divers actually who don't have a digital camera and they're a lot more affordable and it means then people can share their pictures instantly and that makes you want to learn more and it gives you the opportunity to learn um, much, much quicker. We've improved a lot our water quality issues around the UK. So we've got seagrass meadows coming back, especially our intertidal seagrass and that's that's grown back. They found that it's um, been expanding over the last 10-20 um, years, which is a good sign. I mean, there's a lot of sea guys here, so that's great. Um, and they are reproducing, there's a lot of seeds, um, so that's, that's a good indicator. Um, and there doesn't seem to be too much wasting disease. So yeah, I'd say it's been quite good. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of data, so that's always I mean that's always a good thing, even though it is it's a laborious process. But we've got a lot of data to sift through, and that's going to tell us quite a lot um, about the meadow. So that's a good thing. Yeah.